I sure hope you'll tool in Tool Time Taylor. This is going to be my first lecture on control systems. In this video, we're going to talk about the Laplace transform. But before we can get there, we need to provide some context so we understand why the Laplace transform is useful for working with control systems. To do this, I want to introduce the idea of dynamic modeling. Many things in the world around us can be represented as a system that has an input and an output. I'm going to call that input R of T and the output Y of T. These are signals which are functions of time. If the behavior of this system is very simple, then working in the time domain may be good. However, if the system that we're working with is modeled by differential equations, then this may become mathematically difficult. In addition, it's really nice to be able to represent systems using block diagrams, and it is difficult, although not impossible, to represent time domain systems with block diagrams. Frankly, differential equations in the time domain can be more difficult than we would like them to be. So, one tool we can use is the Laplace transform. This tool allows us to make the relationship between the input and the output of the system algebraic. And a lot more of us are comfortable with algebra than are comfortable with differential equations. Let's introduce the Laplace transform with its definition. The Laplace transform of a time domain function f of t is represented by using a squiggly L. And this Laplace transform is equal to capital F of s, a function of s. We use the capital letter to distinguish between time domain, which is lowercase, and Laplace domain, which is uppercase. This is equal to the integral from zero minus, or the instant right before zero, to infinity of f of t e to the minus st dt. The variable s is a complex variable which has a value sigma plus j omega. Sigma is the real part of s and omega is the imaginary part. I notice that since this integral is over t and takes place over the range of all positive values of t, that I'm eliminating t from my expression. I'm left with the variable s. On the other hand, I can take the inverse Laplace transform, which is represented as, again, that squiggly l with an inverse of the Laplace domain function big F of s, and it's equal to one over two pi j integral from sigma minus j infinity to sigma plus j infinity of f of s e to the st ds which I represent as f of t u of t. More on that in a second. Integrating over all possible values of s, I eliminate s from the expression, I get f of t. Now, what is u of t? u of t, which is called the unit step, is equal to one for t greater than or equal to zero, and zero for t less than zero. It means that this function is on for t greater than or equal to zero. Many functions have established Laplace transforms. What I'm going to do is to point to the important ones for control systems on this table. The step function u of t, which we discussed, has a Laplace transform of one over s. e to the minus at is very important because many of the characteristic modes in differential equations can be represented as e to the minus at. Now, strictly speaking, for most of these important pairs, there should be a u of t appended to the end. Sine omega t, cosine omega t, t to the n, all should be appended by u of t. These are all important. The derivative is also important. The integral, the impulse, which needs no extra u of t, and e to the minus a t, both sine of t and cosine of t. These are the really, really important transforms that you might want to use in control systems that we will make use of throughout the rest of these lectures I'm intending to do. The Laplace transform has a number of very nice properties. The first two, addition and scalar multiplication, actually mean that the Laplace transform is a linear operation. It says that if I multiply the time domain function by a scalar k, that the Laplace domain function is also multiplied by that same scalar. And if I add two time domain functions together, their Laplace transform is the sum of the Laplace transform of each of them taken individually. Other important properties are time differentiation, time integration, time shifting, frequency shifting, scaling, time convolution, initial value and final value theorem. Some of these other properties while useful, don't often see a lot of mention in control systems.
Okay, I would like to apply some of what we've learned about to some examples. In the first example, I'd like to find the Laplace transform of a time domain function f of t, which is equal to a e to the minus a t u of t. And I want to do so using the definition of the Laplace transform. To start with, I'm going to write that definition down. Then I'm going to plug in the value of f of t. So I get the integral from zero to infinity of a e to the minus a t, e to the minus s t dt. A is a constant, so I can pull it out front, and I can take those two exponentials and I can mush them together. Executing this integral, I'll get a multiplied by negative one over s plus a e to the minus s plus a t. And that whole thing is going to be evaluated between zero and infinity. Taking e to the negative infinity is zero. Taking e to the zero is one. And so I'm left with a over s plus a, which matches the Laplace transform pair on my table. It also uses the linearity property because I've multiplied by a scalar value a. And multiplying by a scalar value a in the time domain is the same thing is multiplying by a scalar value a in the Laplace domain. In this next example, I'd like to find the inverse Laplace transform of f of s, which is equal to 1 over s plus 3 squared. To solve this, I might want to first look at the inverse Laplace transform definition and realize that it's really hard to do mathematically. So instead, I might want to use the tables. The first pair that I'm going to use is t u of t transforms to 1 over s squared because my function f of s looks like 1 over something squared. I'm also going to use the frequency shifting property, which says e to the minus a t f of t, which Laplace transform forms to the Laplace transform of f, but where the argument instead of being of s is instead of s plus a. The result is that I get the pair t e to the minus a t u of t. Laplace transforms to 1 over s plus a squared. As a result, my inverse Laplace transform is equal to t e to the negative 3 t u of t. Now the next question I have for you is what happens if f of s is not on my table and I want to do the inverse Laplace transform? Well, in that case I need to use what's called partial fraction expansion, which is the topic of the second video in this series. I sure hope that you will tune into that video and continue to learn more about the Laplace transform. See you soon then.